So last night we watched two elite females perform the live stream demo of 21.1 today on site at Training Think Tank. I watch a lot of our on site athletes go, including Travis and Noah. Not everyone's gone thus far, but I feel like I have a little bit more of an understanding of the workout and some of the things that we're going to see with regards to the leaderboard. So I want to share some second thoughts and give you some tips in case you're going to do this workout on Saturday or you're planning for a repeat on Monday. There were definitely some things that I think that we can point out that potentially will help you improve your performance the next time you go or the first time you go. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're on our road to 35K subscribers. And when we hit that milestone, we're gonna give away a Black Zinc Rogue 2.0 barbell. Let us know in the comments below whether or not you like seeing wall walks in the 2021 Open. That comment is what's going to enter you into the giveaway. Once we reach that 35,000 subscriber milestone, we'll use a random YouTube comment generator on one of these videos where we promoted the giveaway to draw a worldwide winner for that bar. So all you gotta do is be subscribed and comment below to enter. First things first, scoring. I think this workout is gonna be very deceptively close on the leaderboard. If you think about a set of 21 wall walks, if you're doing them at about eight to 10 seconds a rep, which is essentially what happens at the end of this workout, you're talking about four or five minutes being on just the wall. So somebody can be in the set of 21 wall walks and get 18 wall walks and somebody else can get 13. And that's like, oh, it's only five wall walks, but that's actually a minute of total work. So you're actually going 6% faster. So being close to somebody in terms of rep count will not necessarily guarantee that your score is gonna be much higher on the leader or, or very close to them on the leaderboard. They can be much higher. There can be thousands of people in between you at each individual rep count in this workout. So that's something to be mindful of that every single rep, especially on the wall ball, is not the wall ball, the wall walk is going to count for you. So make sure that you take that into consideration as you're kind of mapping out what you think you can get on this workout and knowing where you are in the workout. If you're getting close to the end of your double under set and you're getting close to the time cap and you think you can finish and get some wall walks, having a little bit of a sprint to get one or two extra wall walks can really separate you on that leaderboard. And that's really what you should be thinking about as you're going through this workout is trying to figure out about where you're gonna finish and where the maximum separation is gonna be on the leaderboard. The difference of getting 150 and 190 double unders in that last set of 210 is probably not gonna be a big bottleneck separator. But each one of the wall walks in the set of 15 or each one of the wall walks in the set of 21 is probably going to be a big jump on the leaderboard. So that's all we got with regards to score profiles. Some of the major things that we saw that really got people are no rest. So a, th a three no reps on wall walks, for example, can be 30 seconds of total work. 30 seconds over the course of a 15 minute workout is a huge amount of wasted time. So that's one obvious thing that people are definitely gonna have to figure out with regards to their first or their second attempt is how are you gonna minimize no reps? So my first tip with regards to your repeat or your first attempt is avoiding no reps. The thing that I've seen that most people get their no reps for as they get tired and as they get sloppy is, as they're pushing off the floor and they're letting their feet climb the wall, their one foot is coming up and they're pushing back with their hand and lifting that front hand off the line as the second foot is coming up. That's obviously, according to the standard, a no rep. So a cue and a technical way to do this that I think can avoid the no reps on the way back would be first, get into a kneeling push-up position. So get down on the ground and push yourself into a kneeling push-up position and push your butt almost back to the wall. From that position, climb your legs up into the wall so you're almost in a 45 degree hollow body hold and your hands are still on the line and then walk your hands back from that position. If you can ingrain that, you'll make it more likely when you get under fatigue that you're not gonna kind of cut that line and get an unnecessary no rep. Similarly, on the way down, what a lot of people did when they're walking their hands forward, they would take one big step, another big step, a third step and get one hand to the line, then their feet would kind of ghost ride down the wall as they were reaching forward to touch the front line. There were some times where it was really close and hard to tell, and it could be like a give them benefit of the doubt type situation, and sometimes where the feet would clearly hit before that second hand reached. So just be very careful of ghost riding on the way down. As you're doing your actual reps, what we've found the, I guess, 
optimal way in terms of being quick is four steps back, three steps forward. When I say steps, it's obviously hands. On the way back, it's a little bit far, it's a little bit more difficult to take big steps. So if you get into that hollow position, it's one, two, then the third step of your backhand is gonna get to the line, and then that fourth one will come to the line, and that's four steps to get back. On the way forward, it's a little bit easier to get to the line. You can walk that front hand a lot farther forward to the line, then the second hand can get all the way to the line in a second step, and then the third hand can actually come back to the line in three steps. If you can ingrain that in your warm up and make sure that you got that rhythm figured out, you can put little tape lines down on your pad or on your floor to give yourself a visual cue of where you need to put your hands, that can be really helpful to avoid any unnecessary stepping. What we saw when people were going through the workout as they got into the set of 15, into the set of 21, they were taking six or seven steps on the way back and they're kind of shuffling their hands and what that ended up doing is it made each one of the wall walk reps longer so instead of being a five second rep it was actually a 10 second rep and being under tension for that much longer requires people to rest longer between. So those types of errors with regards to the hand placement or, I mean, it would almost be like similar to footwork with regards to a burpee. When we started learning bar facing burpees, we would teach people step here, step here, this foot comes up, jump and rotate in the air. Similarly, because the wall walk is a new movement, you're gonna have to learn this on the fly. So if you haven't done your first attempt yet, it might be worthwhile to come into the gym instead of planning on doing the work workout, just practice that wall walk rhythm. Get into a routine, practice your steps, figure out which hand goes forward or, or backward, which leg goes up on the wall first, and try to get that a little bit more automatic. When you get tired in this workout, it becomes really sloppy and people are missing reps and they're adding so many unnecessary steps to the wall walks. If you can keep them tight with this kind of magic number of four steps back, three steps forward, you can keep your rhythm a lot faster so each one of your reps can be faster and you'll bank a little bit of time to rest as you get tired and your shoulders get fatigued. Then number three tip would be break double unders early and often. Golden if you're doing the set of 30, 60, 90, those sets sound pretty small. So it seems like, oh, I'll go unbroken because I'm pretty good at double unders and I'll get through it. But the unnecessary stress on your shoulders for going unbroken versus taking a three to five second break in the middle of those sets just to shake your arms out and take your shoulders off tension will allow you to go a lot faster in the wall walks, which is the major separator of this workout. The major separation that we've seen really starts in the set of 15 and the set of 21 wall walks. Now, if you're an intermediate or RX type athlete, it's really gonna be that set of 15 and 150 that's gonna separate you. If you're an elite athlete, it's that set of 21 and getting into the 210 that's really gonna separate you. So it's a different place in the workout for each one of the different tiers of athletes, but it's the same concept. There's gonna be one big bottleneck wall walk set and you wanna set your pacing structure up so that you're ready to go as fast as you can in that set when you start to get to muscular failure in your shoulders, when your core starts breaking down, when the technique of your wall walk starts breaking down because you haven't practiced it in really high volumes. So that's all I got with regards to tips. I think if you apply those three things with regards to your attempt, you're gonna get the best possible outcome you can on a test that has a movement that you haven't really been able to practice in a lot of volume in a Metcon-based format. If you have, then some of this stuff might not be applicable and you might already have your technique dialed in. But I think having a technical approach to the movement with regards to a wall walk is gonna give you the biggest separation in this workout. From a score profile perspective, we can't really be accurate predictors of what that top 10% number is. And remember, when it comes to top 10%, there's three workouts in the open. So just being in the top 10% in one workout doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be a top 10% athlete for three. And that means the same thing. If you're lower than 10% on this workout, and then you get a workout that's in your wheelhouse next week, this is a game of averages. So don't get too caught up in the numbers of just thinking about week one of the open. People used to do that in the 
past, it was five weeks, but they would crush workout one, workout two, and then as workout three, four, and five came, it would punch them in the face and they'd fall way down the leaderboard. So keep that in mind as you're going through this, that A, my prediction might not actually be accurate relative to the people that signed up for the open, and B, that just being in the top 10% for this first workout does not mean anything. However, that being said, I think the scores, what we've seen is that the top 10% number, if we had to guess right now after seeing just our on-site crew in the elites go yesterday, we think that it would be somebody finishing somewhere in the set of 150 double unders or being in that set of 21 wall walks. Now just remember that set of 21 wall walks, you can get there at nine minutes or you can get there at 13 minutes. So there's a huge range of the amount of time that is going to be spent in that set and how fast people are getting there. But I think somewhere in there is where we're going to see athletes finishing in that top 10 percentile. So apply these tips. Good luck on your first attempt or second attempt on your repeat. Apply these. Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. Good luck. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.